Good morning, everyone. My name is Lisa Greer, and I proudly serve as the current chair for the Economic Development Council of South Miami-Dade. I would like to welcome you to the third and final community meeting for the South Miami-Dade Economic Development Strategy Project. I would like at this time just to recognize our EDC board members, Sue DePaz, who's our treasurer and secretary, Peter England, who's our executive director, Renee Infante, he's our immediate past chair, Wilbur Bell, one of our original founders, Baldwin English and Tanya Acosta. We also have a, a vast economic development advisory council members, hopefully they're on the call as well. We appreciate your time. So the presentation that you will hear and see today will provide the EDC and the economic development practitioners engaged in South Dade with an effective strategy that can bring jobs and economic activity to South Dade. Our organization is proud to have been part of this project because not only is it a step in the right direction to bring much needed economic activity to our communities in South Dade, it's been created in a manner that engages all of our South Dade communities, its businesses and community leaders. What you'll see today is a strategy that grew from South Dade statistics and best practices from other economic development practitioners. With today's presentation and your input, we'll have the opportunity to create an economic development strategy that can grow and change as times require. Your comments and questions regarding this presentation today are critical in the completion of this strategy. You'll see throughout the presentation how to do that. However, if you have any questions during or after the presentation, please send them to South Dade meetings at miamidade.gov. When, when you make your comments, please include your slide numbers in your question and all questions will be addressed at the end of the presentation or you'll receive an email with the response. You can also raise your hand by clicking on the raise your hand icon at the bottom of the Zoom screen. And if you're joining us by telephone, please hit star nine to record your question. At this time, let's see, at this time, what I'm going to do, since I see the Honorable Mayor Lozner here on the call with us, I'm going to turn the call over to him for his comments. Mayor Lozner was elected to a two-year term as mayor in November 2019. He previously served on the City of, City of Homestead Council during 2001 and 2007. Mayor Lozner, we look forward to some comments from you. Can you get on the call now? Sure, thank you. Can you hear me okay? Yes, sir. Very good. Well, good morning, everyone. It's, uh, it's good to uh, virtually see all of you and be, be with you uh, this morning. You know, this is, this is so encouraging. There have been so many false starts in the past and, and even red herrings, if you will, but um, it's my belief that the, the Deep South Dade community has finally you know, come together in a cohesive manner and, and is moving forward. And we recognize that we are the last frontier for residential, for commerce, for industrial. And as such, we can pick and choose what we feel is best for our community and not accept the crumbs of the consolation prize prizes that, that may be offered to our communities. And uh, what I've certainly experienced since November is that proverbial thinking out of the box and thinking big. And that was going on even before the, uh, the pandemic uh, set in. And, and that vision uh, has not, and certainly from Homestead's perspective, is, is not going to, to waver that we, uh, we have our seat at the table and we are going to uh, you know, affirmatively seek out and, and ensure that, that our communities have the best pros prospects for uh, you know, land value, for jobs, uh, a diversity of jobs and, and, and more jobs on the, the higher end of the spectrum than, than what we've had in the past. So this is just uh, a very encouraging moment and uh, you know, we have the momentum and I look forward to, uh, to this carrying on for many years. So well, thank you for having me this morning. 
You are very welcome, Maya Lozner. I do now see um, on the call with us Commissioner Moss. Um, Commissioner Moss, welcome to this virtual meeting today. Would you like to say a few words to the audience? Uh, yes, good morning uh, to everyone that's Zooming uh, with us this morning. Um, it's a pleasure to be a part of the third community meeting for the South Miami Day Economic Development Strategy. As you will hear this morning, this strategy provides a feasible plan that with the support from everyone involved in economic development in the area will bring jobs and needed economic activity to South Day. The strategy that you will hear about today is not only the product of planning effort that started in October of 2019. This plan represents years of effort by many community and business leaders at the county and municipal levels. When Miami-Dade County submitted a grant to the Economic Development Administration for funding needed to complete this project, we made a commitment that the economic development strategy would be inclusive and resilient, that it would be sufficiently flexible to address the unexpected. Well, so here we are dealing with an upheaval in our way of life in our economy, COVID-19 and social justice reform and unrest. COVID-19 has made having a South Day specific economic development strategy more important than ever. In addition to laying out an economic development strategy for the longer term, this report contains a component for dealing with the COVID-19 impacts that will appear in the short and long term. As a result of having gone through this process, we know based on demographics and st statistics that you know, what are the strengths and weaknesses of the South Dade economy and how the county EDC brings the community together to address the growth. As I mentioned before, this effort for a South Dade specific economic development strategy and program has been ongoing for many years and it must proceed into the future. This strategy is a living document that must adapt to whatever comes our way. I can't think of any other area of the county that is more adept to dealing with the unexpected. Words like Andrew, NAFTA, BRAC, and mortgage failures conjure up times when we were not quite sure what the next step would be. Today, COVID evokes some of the same feelings, but because of the planning that has occurred, we are in a better place to deal with the unknowns. I want to share something before I close uh, with you know, the audience. Uh, we are now negotiating uh, with a large e-commerce uh, logistics company uh, that's looking to build a million square feet um, uh, warehouse, 300, bring 325 jobs, and make an $80 million investment and open by next summer uh, near Homestead Air Reserve Base um, in the area you know, where we currently have FedEx uh, and other activities that are basically going on. So just wanted to bring that to your attention. Finally, I thank you for being a part of this effort that's so important for South Dade, and I urge you to remain a part of the ongoing effort. Thank you very much. Commissioner Moss, thank you very much. I see that um, Representative Debbie Mukasal Powell looks to be on the line at this point. So at this point in time, it gives me great pleasure to introduce our guest speaker, Honorable Representative Debbie Murkersell Powell. Thank you so much for being with us this morning. The floor is yours. Thank you so much. Good morning, everyone. I'm sorry, I had a little bit of technical difficulties, but here I am. It's great to see all of you um, this Tuesday morning and grateful for the opportunity to speak to you. Before anything else, I just wanna say thank you. Um, you know, due to the dangers that we have been facing by the coronavirus, without a vaccine or treatment available, the only way that we're going to be able to save lives or that we have been able to protect lives here in the community is to shut a lot of businesses down. Businesses large and small throughout South Florida made that sacrifice, that necessary sacrifice to temporarily close down so that we can slow down the spread. Actually, it was interesting to see yesterday, there was a report that came out of UC Berkeley that because of the shutdowns all over the world, we were able to um, prevent 500 million people from getting infected. In the United States, 60 million, which was a very, very significant figure. 
While the economic impacts of the shutdown were felt nationwide, South Florida was severely impacted. Spa businesses, especially the restaurant and the tourism industries have been devastated by this pandemic. It was a painful decision to make that decision to shut everything down. And I know that many of you risked your businesses, your jobs, not knowing how long you would have to face the shutdown or what the future would bring. But because of these actions, I just, I wanna say thank you once again, because you have been able to be a huge part of the reason why we haven't seen such a large number of uh, people losing their lives here in South Florida. Now we need to learn how to reopen our businesses while coexisting with this virus, because although we've passed that initial peak, COVID-19 is still out there. We'll need to adjust our day-to-day -day to keep our businesses running while minimizing the health risks. It's not gonna be an easy process, um, but know that in Congress, I am ready to help and I have been advocating for all of you in Washington, D.C. The CARES Act included much needed funding, which included the Paycheck Protection Program to help keep small businesses afloat. And recently, I was very proud to be part of an effort to make the PPP more flexible for businesses. And that was signed into law next last week. It included Economic Development Administration grants to aid in the economic recovery. With funding provided for by legislation that Congress passed, the USDA has also been able to set up the Coronavirus Food Assistance Program to provide direct payments to farmers who have suffered tremendous losses in, in South Dade. But more needs to be done to help all of you get back on your feet. The House recently passed legislation that included significant funding for states and local municipalities to provide much needed aid for economic development as well as funding for schools that have been hard by this pandemic. We're also working, one of the things that I'm very proud to be a part of, um, I'm a member of the Transportation and Infrastructure Committee. I'm actually a member of the Economic Development Subcommittee in that on TNI. And we have been working for months, even before coronavirus, on passing a massive infrastructure package. And that's gonna make huge investments, not just to fix our crumbling roads, but also to provide economic opportunity by connecting our communities and creating uh, great jobs. The, the initial package is estimating to create 10 million jobs in the next five years. And we all know how much we need to invest in our transportation system, in our roads, in our bridges, and also taking into account resiliency, sea level rise. That's all part of this package that we will be introducing um, this month. I actually have a hearing this afternoon, and hopefully it'll pass the House of Representatives with bipartisan support sometime in late June or maybe beginnings of July. So just know that I'm here. I'm available for anything you may need. If you need to reach out to me, I am working for specifically for South Date. There's a lot of opportunity. We need to invest in our community so that we can bounce back from this crisis. Thank you so much, Lisa. Thank you, Congresswoman. We appreciate your attendance here today and certainly your support of our communities. We, you know, we couldn't do all this without you. Um, without going, before going, moving forward, I see that now Commissioner Kava is on the line. Welcome. Good morning, Commissioner. Would you like to say a few words before we move on? Thank you very much, Chairwoman Greer. Uh, I am also attending a committee meeting, so I apologize uh, for delay. Um, so I wanna say that this is a great moment, uh, the third and final of this phase of what has been a multi-year effort. Uh, so this economic development strategy and program for South Dade uh, has been my priority since coming into office in 2014. Uh, we got off the ground running in 2015 with the uh, Tomorrow South Dade effort. And um, then the partnership between Districts 8 and 9 and Commissioner Moss, the author of the Moss Plan, uh, who laid the groundwork uh, for so much of this. Uh, we received the EDA grant uh, in conjunction with Miami-Dade County and with the South Florida Regional Planning Council, which I'm now honored to, to chair and uh, delighted that we received the support from the Regional Economic Development Administration under the leadership of Mr. Greg uh, Bidet. Uh, so uh, we're coming to an end and along comes COVID. So uh, fortunately, uh, 
every crisis creates an opportunity. So while we were building on uh, recovery still from Hurricane Andrew and uh, the economic uh, challenges uh, that have been uh, posed to us at every turn in South Dade, and we know we are so resilient, more resilient than ever, here comes this latest challenge. And we are equal to the task, and so we are proceeding forward uh, with an application for support for implementation, which requires all of you. Now, we have gotten to where we are for this comprehensive strategy with, of course, uh, the guidance of the Economic Development Council, but uh, our consultants, but really the strong support of our municipalities. So we have a great, great partnership. Each of these municipalities uh, in South Dade has come on board. They all have their own strong economic development agenda, but working together, we've been able to craft this regional strategy. And you all remember South Dade More to Explore was the moniker that we came up with, uh, with support from the um, uh, Visitors uh, uh, Convention and Visitors Bureau and Beacon Council. Uh, but now we're moving forward to focus more squarely on resilience, on physical and economic uh, resilience that we have proven to be the case. So um, I'm so grateful that we're going to utilize this next opportunity to put us in good stead. It's great to hear from Commissioner Moss that we have yet another project coming along in District 9 from which we will all benefit uh, in the region. I know listening to Mayor Losner, they have a very, very strong effort as well that we've been uh, very proud to support. So the time and energy that everybody uh, has spent, all the community uh, chambers and uh, businesses and other leadership has been very well spent. So I say onward to implementation uh, and I'm very excited for the next phase. Thank you so very much, Lisa. Thank you, Commissioner Kava. And I know also on the call, we have Greg, Greg Vade with us from the Economic Development Administration. Appreciate his attendance here today. This is very important that we all work together. At this time, I believe it's, it's time to move forward and um, introduce the Lambert Associates team for the rest of this presentation. Well, good morning, everybody. Um, my, uh, uh, my, my name is Paul Lambert uh, with the firm of, of Lambert Advisory. Um, and uh, we're we're very very pleased to uh, to spend the time with you this morning in this third meeting um, of the South Dade uh, Economic Development Strategy. Um, uh, I, I I will I will say, uh, and uh, as much as I welcome you from downtown Miami, I, I very much had wished this morning, um, and even two months ago when we started this process, that we'd be with you in person. Uh, in Homestead, and as much as all of us are getting used to doing these these Zoom meetings, um, um, I'm, I personally am very, uh, very much look, looking forward to the day when we can all get together again uh, personally and, and be able to, to talk about, about this and other issues associated with South Day. But we're going to spend the next, um, the next 30 to 40 minutes, uh, both myself and Diana Gonzalez, who's been overseeing this project with me uh, at least back in, since since October of 2019 um, to talk about uh, to talk about the strategy as it's as it's, it's been been developed. Um, we uh, we developed we started this strategy built upon information, and I think you you heard this uh, from uh, from the mayor and, and the commissioners. Uh, that the, a lot of, and, and Lisa as well, that this was built on a foundation that actually started in 2016. Um, this is not something that just came out of this process. So um, this is very much, was the, the strategy itself very much is taken into account, um, has built upon efforts that have been been ongoing now for at least the past, the past four years. Um, but in on top of that, We've been able to add to it based upon using data and other information, um, surveys of some of the top employers within, within South Aid, uh, former plans and studies, and testing that information, actually going out and doing field work, meeting with stakeholders, uh, building upon the work in the community meetings, which I'll, I'll highlight in a minute, uh, that have already already been, been done to develop this, this strategy. So this, this comes out of a substantial amount of, amount of effort and work um, that's not only started within within the economic development strategy itself, but but started much, much quite a bit prior prior to this effort beginning as as well. 
Um, the economic development plan structure uh, is, uh, is, as I said, we very much started with economic and demographic basis for our recommendations, developing that, uh, that understanding of where the market is, market is today, um, as well as, as, well as uh, being able to outline at least the marketing strategy for economic development in, in South Bay. We've also done an evaluation of opportunities and constraints within the market, which we'll go through and Diana will take you through. Uh, in, in, a, in a little bit um, and implementation considerations and budget. So it's not only the strategy for the plan, but how do you actually get the plan plan done? Um, one of the one of the missing elements over the years is that people have laid out um, a, a large a larger vision. Um, they've also laid out even strategies around economic development. This is the first time I believe, um, having been involved in several of those prior efforts of really saying um, what are the nuts and bolts of actually how do you put this into action and who who does what um, and what's it going to actually cost to be able to to be able to get there um, and then we we finally come back to to implementation in a matrix um, that's very industry specific as you'll see at the end of the presentation so those industries which we will label for the market for the moment target industries or those industries some of which are traditional i.e i mean that we all know agriculture, uh, the military, um, retail to, to, to a large extent, um, and emerging industries as well, which until we started to take a look at the data, didn't quite realize how strong those industries are growing. Um, as Commissioner Moss, and this is the first time I've even heard, heard this, as Commissioner Moss said, uh, we, we have a base all of a sudden, everyone used to say South Dade is way too far out of the, um, out of the, the transportation network uh, to be able to support this distribution. Um, and, uh, and logistics. That is clearly no longer the case. Um, South Aid is, has become a major and is increasingly a major distribution and logistics, logistics hub. Same, same thing uh, with, uh, with professional services. Uh, for a long time, professional services were very much focused, I mean, engineers, architects, uh, were very much focused in downtown Doral and Coral Gables. Um, in Miami-Dade County, that's no longer that's no longer the case. Um, in fact, you've seen this large growth in professional services in South Dade, and we'll go through that quite a bit and how to and, and talk about strategies of how to strengthen those um, uh, those those particular industries and help them help them come along over over the long term. Um, just to just to recap our community meetings and and kind of the the. Kind of community meeting memory lane, right? Our, our community, our first community meeting was really uh, focused on working with the attendees on a SWOT analysis, strengths, weaknesses, opportunities, and, and threats uh, within the confines of South Bay. And we did that in November of 2019. The second community meeting, uh, January 30th, uh, right before we started uh, to understand, uh, about a month out before we started to understand uh, what the impacts of COVID were, were actually going to be in, in, in our in our communities. Um, uh, it's really focused in on. We had a we had a panel, as some of you that attended will remember, uh, as a model economic development entity panel from around the state of people that have done economic development in various communities that that somehow mirror or are similar to South South Data. And a lot of good information came out of that came out of that panel as well. Um, today's meeting is really uh, focused on several parts. Uh, one. One, I guess, uh, um, advantage uh, is, is that we started to develop this strategy right at the very beginning edge of, of the COVID, COVID crisis. So we've actually, be able, we've actually incorporated some recommendations associated with recovery from the immediate, immediate crisis in terms, of, in terms of COVID. And you'll see that as part of, part of the plan and Diana will walk you through that uh, in, in, uh, in short order. Uh, but we've also developed a number of, of longer term strategies and as I said before, organizational strategies as well. So I, with, with that, I'd like to turn it over to, uh, to Diana to be able to, to spend a little bit of time talking about, about our very immediate needs as it relates to COVID and some of the economic development strategies associated with that. So Diana, if you, if you yep. take a look. Thank you, Paul. Be before I actually get started on this section of the presentation, I'd like to give Greg Bidet uh, an opportunity to, to speak to us. I believe he is, I hope he's still on. Perhaps he'll come back if he's not on, but um, Greg Bidet is the Economic Development uh, Administration representative for the Southeast region, and he's been working with us throughout the application of the grant, and certainly we hope will be working with us for the implementation uh, into the future. So, I, Greg, if you're on, 
okay, perhaps we can, uh, we, we can get him back. So um, several of our speakers have touched on the, the COVID-19 issue that popped up um, uh, just as we were completing our effort. And it, has re it really gave us an opportunity to go back, take a look at the plan. And one of the things we've determined is when issues like COVID come up, that, that really exemplifies the reason for having a plan like the one we're, we're presenting today and that we hope will be uh, implemented into the future. Um, and as you can see on the slide, the, the biggest concern that we have about COVID is the impact that it's going, that it may have, uh, potentially will have on our small businesses in Miami-Dade County, especially because in South Miami-Dade, uh, we, so much of the employment is dependent on, on companies that are smaller than 20 employees. Um, South Dade has a very limited number of large employees uh, and it, uh, employers, excuse me. And in addition, the pandemic has severely impacted tourism, retail, agriculture, and healthcare, industries that truly represent the core of South Dade's traditional economy. Next slide, please. Um, one, a couple of the things that we are recommending, a, a couple of the strategies, is for our local economic development organization in South Dade to continue with their, with their community-wide meetings, with, but that they have a focus on the COVID-19, asking the questions, who's affected, what are the needs, how can we move forward? Uh, we also, Miami-Dade County also has the opportunity to apply for um, uh, relief funding from the EDA. It was funding that came through the CARES Act uh, and there could be a focus on, on COVID as well as infrastructure and other issues that are relevant to Miami-Dade County as a whole and South Dade in particular. Next slide. When we talked about the, the COVID recovery working group, this is very similar to uh, a working group that we have used in the past that, that I know the EDC is currently using for uh, a lot of their community outreach. And it would be an effort that would bring together the entities that um, on a daily basis work on economic devel development issues and strategies, in, focusing again on the South Dade area. Next slide. Uh, and, and again, the goals of this working group would be to uh, assess the state of, of South Dade, of the economy, uh, post-COVID, identify specific tactics for assistance to the local businesses, develop uh, a program that focuses specifically on micro-businesses, uh, and that's firms that employ up to 20 employees, and, and startups which may thrive and grow into the future and identify economic development policies that help replace jobs and industries lost in the South Dade economy as a result of this pandemic. This is going to be especially true as it relates to um, so many of, of the service-oriented small businesses and retail. Uh, as it relates to our second strategy, um, again, while this is evolving on a daily basis, there, there is an application that I know is being pulled together. Uh, there is a regional approach um, that is being looked at for putting together an application for not only South Dade, but all of Miami-Dade County. But what we are urging here is, however that application is submitted to the federal government, we want to make sure that whatever components are in this plan that we can replicate for the COVID and and we've highlighted one already, that that be incorporated in the application that would be going to the federal government, uh, albeit at a regional level. Uh, and again, that, uh, next slide, Paul. Um, so I, I just- uh, I mean, So the idea in, in regards to the COVID application is that while there is 1.47 billion available Nationwide, there is a limited amount for the Southeast region. There's going to be even less for our region of, of Florida. And the, the urgency is that whatever gets incorporated also have a focus on South Dade. 
I'd like to give you a reminder that if you have any questions or comments during the presentation, please send them to, this, uh, to us at southdademeetings at miamidade.gov. Uh, we've already gotten a couple of questions, so we will be answering them at the end. And before I turn it back to Paul, I'd like to ask again if Greg Bidet is on the call, because uh, I'd like to give him the floor before we move on. But I don't see him on here. Okay. So Paul, I'll talk to you. Yes? Diana, it appears that um, Greg sent a message that he had an issue with his connection. Oh, okay. Remain on the call, but he's very much looking forward to engaging in further conversations and creating a more resilient and resourceful South Miami-Dade economy. So we appreciate his comments. Perfect. Thank you, Lisa. Paul, back to you. Okay, thanks, Diana. Thank you. Um, so, uh, so I, I just want to go over the background, background to the market. And as Diana said, just to reiterate, um, if you send emails and you'll see that pop up a couple of times. So if you didn't, if you didn't catch it, uh, we'll, we'll bring it back up. What the email is at the end of the presentation, we'll answer, uh, as many, as many of the questions as, as, as we can. So, um, as, as it relates to the background of the market, we presented some of this information earlier, earlier on, but, uh, but again, we have a large audience out there and I want to make sure that everyone is on the same page when we talk about South Bay, what exactly are we talking about? And for purposes, at least for this study, because people have different boundaries and you heard the mayor talk about deep South Bay, um, uh, as opposed to South, South Dade overall. But for purposes of, of this analysis, um, essentially this is from Kendall Drive, Kendall Drive South. Um, and it includes not only unincorporated area of Miami-Dade County, uh, but also the five municipalities uh, of Florida City, Homestead, Cutler Bay, uh, Palmetto Bay, and Pinecrest uh, within, within the area. So um, that's, our, that's our geographic area. I mean, if you look at, at areas that saw growth, we've kind of gone back in terms of what employment is. And as it relates to economic development, we very much closely track employment growth and wages as a core component. Not only it's, it's more difficult to get business, business operating data and, and sales at a local level, but we certainly have very good information on uh, unemployment. And we've seen this, as I talked before, some growth in some core industries. Arts, entertainment, and recreation, uh, big, big industry, the, the ones that are highlighted in, 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 uh, in yellow here. Healthcare and social, social assistance, um, big, big category. Professional science and technical services have seen, seen substantial growth in the past, at least between 2011 and 2017. Uh, finance insurance um, as, as well, and transportation and warehousing. Um, categories that have always been big em employers in South Dade, but have not actually actually experienced uh, growth, or for that matter, or substantial as substantial growth, or for that matter, have actually seen some loss. Included agriculture, uh, construction, retail, trade, uh, and even in the real estate real estate industry. So um, these are these are critically important industries for for South Dade. Um, and and by the way, we should have also highlighted the very top public administration, which includes defense, because it's uh, in terms of federal federal government uh, has also seen a decline in terms of employment. Uh, these, these are critical industries in South Dade, and so that decline, while we're happy to see the growth in those, in those categories in yellow, those are in green are, are ones uh, that we certainly need to, need to be cognizant of and, and be able to support as well going, going forward. Um, the state has allowed us to do a projection of, or does, does a projection of where growth is going in the future. Um, and interestingly enough, and which is terrific for South Dade. Again, this is this is all pre-COVID, but I, I I think over the long term uh, these these will these will continue for all of the reasons uh, that that we now understand. The, these are categories that are continue to see growth in South Dade as we recover um, over the next the next um, uh, period of period of time. No one's actually predicting right now, but over the, over the next year or two years. Um, but transportation and warehousing, finance, insurance, professional science, say many, many, many of the same categories uh, that we've seen growth in in the past in South Dade are the ones that are likely to grow, grow in the future. Um, but one of the core components of this, and I cannot stress this, this enough, is is to have the, infra the educational infrastructure which supports business business activity, right? So, you can absolutely have um, a educational uh, framework which uh, which, for all intents and purposes, is training training students 
uh, for the wrong industries. Um, and so there has to be, we've had great participation from some of the universities and even within, within the school board and others in this process, uh, which is critically important because, because these, these go absolutely hand in hand. And uh, we, we have a large number of, of secondary schools and primary schools, uh, certainly universities within South Dade, but there, there is a, a Nobel Prize winner, Gary Becker, um, who uh, this has become a, a phrase that everyone knows now, but, but when, when he initially wrote this, wrote this book, uh, Human Capital, um, it, was, it was kind of, un, it, was, it was unknown. It was not really kind of in the lexicon of, of economic development folks about how important developing human capital is to, to businesses. I mean, businesses have always known, or rather known that they, that they need, need strong staff. Uh, but for the, for, the, for the large part, um, uh, it, was, it was never formalized and understood in the way uh, since Gary Becker's book and has become a cornerstone of the economic development efforts um, all, all over the world uh, as, as well. Um, and so we, we constantly are focused every time that we do this around the state, around the, around the country and um, elsewhere, focused in on understanding how we can tie, tie education and the strategies to tie education back to, back to economic development. Um, we've also done a projection, which we don't have actually to prepare to, to show you today, but I, I think it's, the projection is this, but, but what we haven't done is we are now in the process with the county running something called a economic impact analysis to show just how important this employment growth, that, that investment in business and employment growth and wages are uh, to, the, to the local economy. Um, and this is less for people within, within the region, but certainly in terms of as it relates to policymakers um, at the county level, at the state level, federal, and, and even, even within the municipalities, um, so that they have the, the information and the support to, under, to understand if you invest in economic development, um, it yields results in terms of fiscal benefits and and um, and tax dollars uh, that flow back into back into the community, and so that investment many 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 more times over, uh, as as we'll see going going forward, than what the what the base investment is. So small investment in economic development activities and focusing on economic development have have long term benefits um, in for, for for government at all at all levels as well. Um, we then went through a process of identifying opportunity sites uh, and uh, specific locations within South Dade uh, that were uh, that were ripe for for investment. And we actually started by going through a large a large number of, of sites and whittling it down uh, to what's kind of presented presented here on the map. And then we took another step and actually, actually ranked uh, these sites as it relates to their ability to, to attract economic development. So this is, this is not for housing development. This is specifically for business activity and, and business development. And what, what you see is a number, of, a number of areas that really fell through and fell out of the list very, very strongly in terms of it have a high probability and high ability to be able to support future, future investment and, and development, but some of them need, need further, further investment, i.e. for infrastructure, uh, transportation, and other, other investment as well. But this, again, begins to form the way that in, that investment can get focused um, at, a, uh, at a very, very micro level, or at, at least at a, at a property or area level. Um, so those, those include the biomedical corridor, uh, Miami corridor, uh, the Miami Executive Airport, uh, in and around Zoo, Zoo Miami, uh, the South Dade Government Center, uh, as 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 well, um, and there's a number of other 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 parcels. And then we went through this evaluation criteria, as I said, infrastructure availability, highway access. So tried to do this in a in a, in a very uh, in a very comprehensive and thoughtful thoughtful way. Um, and we actually then were able to identify very high potential opportunity areas um, for, for future investment. The falls being, being one of them. Um, interestingly enough, that's even before, uh, before the, the crisis and, um, and Bloomingdale's uh, closing was, was announced. Um, so we, we spent quite a bit of time focusing on, on that area in and around the falls. Um, Southland Mall. I know there's there's already a question about about South Midland Mall as as, as well as, that that had just popped up, and we we can talk about that in some more detail as as well. Uh, Florida Florida City uh, Homestead, particularly around, around the Reserve Air Force Base, um, as well as the the Speedway um, and the Homestead Park of Commerce included included within that. Uh, Princeton and Naranja as as well. So those are kind of the the very high level uh, key key areas where we see. Uh, a real opportunity for economic development and have have many of the uh, the base infrastructure and other 
other um, uh, criteria or past certain criteria uh, that allowed it. And many of these um, are concurrent with what was identified during the SMART plan as it relates to transportation, where those stops are gonna be on the, uh, on the high speed, uh, the bus rapid transit uh, corridor within South Dade as well. And so they, they mirror each other, each other very, very well and are, are, are taken into to account also. So again, just, just another time, um, you know, as we go through this, if you have comments, questions, you can email at any time to that South Dade meetings, and I should point out South Dade meetings is plural, not uh, not singular. Uh, at Miami dot dot gov uh, going going forward. Um, so I'm going to turn it back over to to Diana to talk a bit about the SWOT analysis, uh, and then and then we'll we'll pick it up as we talk about the organizational consideration, or I'll pick it back up as we talk about the organizational considerations as well. So Diana, thank you, Paul. Um, Throughout this process, you, you've heard us talk about how this is an effort that's been going on for some time. Not only this particular grant effort that, that started uh, back in uh, October of 2019, but prior to that, we've had quite a few community meetings. We've had a lot of input uh, through uh, community summits that had been sponsored by uh, Commissioner Cava, Commissioner Moss, with the support of, of Mayor Jimenez. And throughout the last few years, and including it during our first meeting, we went through the effort of asking our participants, what do you believe the strengths, weaknesses, opportunities, and threats are for South Dade? Uh, again, this is, some of this is based on the perception of, of the people who participated. But as you can see, in terms of strengths, uh, we believe we have a diverse community, affordably priced housing, availability of lower cost land that makes development feasible and business expansion feasible, strong sense of community, good quality of life. Um, I was looking back at some materials that had been prepared uh, in 1998 for uh, a marketing campaign that was funded after Hurricane Andrew. Uh, and those of you who've been working on this for many years will remember we had the small town values and the big city skills brochures that even at that time spoke to these uh, strengths and, and the weaknesses and opportunities and threats I'm about to go through. In terms of, of weaknesses, we, we perceive that we have a lack of infrastructure. Um, that was especially true when we had a lack of water and sewer infrastructure going down the US-1 corridor. That's been improved. However, it still needs improvement. There are still many projects from the Building Better Communities Bond Program in South Dade that need to be implemented. Lack of economic development focused effort. You heard Mayor Lozner said, uh, you know, how we've, we've always focused on economic development for South Dade. Uh, in, in fits and starts, and um, we, what is necessary is a long-term um, um, focused program that isn't going to end uh, just because a grant is over or because the funding has run out, but something that can be um, maintained for the long-term. A perceived lack of skills in the workforce. Um, this unfortunately continues to be an, an issue of how our public schools are, are perceived, not necessarily what's happening in our public schools. Our public schools have improved significantly over the last several years. Uh, we have many A-rated schools. I, I, at one time we had an F-rated school, that, doesn't, that is not the case anymore. We have specific programs that focus on um, IB uh, training on working with, with universities, working with, the, with Cambridge University, other universities here in, in Miami-Dade County as well. And our schools are much stronger than that perception that we currently have out in the community. In terms of our threats, well, certainly COVID-19 has, has you know, taken the lead uh, on, on our threats. A negative perception of the area in some, sometimes has held the community back. The sense that people live in South Dade simply because they can't afford to live somewhere else um, is, is something that we need to turn around. In many cases has been turned around. 
Uh, people are recognizing the, the importance of living in close proximity to a natural environment that quite honestly is, is hard to find in many other places. Um, the fact that, that we do have housing that we can afford, that, we, that, that people can live and, uh, and play in the community uh, is, is, you know, is something that you don't find very many places. The brain drain. Uh, when we had our focus group with, with the educational um, uh, uh, people that, that were working with us on the education issues uh, for, for this plan, one of, the, one of the negative problems that we have is, is many kids get a great education here, they get recruited by an Ivy League university, and then they don't come back. And they don't come back because in, in many instances, we don't have the, the, the jobs that would bring them back. So that is something that is a threat. It continues to be a threat. Uh, and it's something that we do need to address. In terms of opportunities, the, and again, based on, our, on the perceptions that we received, we have a young, well-trained workforce. We have a strong sense of entrepreneurship, and that is proven when you look at the number of of companies that are in that micro business um, category of less than 20. Uh, and, and, and we need to, um, the, and the opportunity to build on continued strength of higher wage industries. Uh, the industries that, that we're promoting here uh, in, in, in this plan will assist in not only bringing jobs in those particular industries, but also in improving the, the supply chain that supports those industries. Next slide. As part of the plan, we also developed a vision um, as to what is it that we want South Dade to be. South Dade has always been described by anyone that you ask as being a very special place. It's a place where you, you really can as I said before, live and play. Uh, and some people can also work, but we want to make it possible for more people to work. So our, the, the vision that we're putting forward for South Aid is a community where people desire to live, work, and play, where sustainability is a guiding principle and not an afterthought, where the traditional industries of agriculture, military, healthcare, tourism, and retail can be maintained and otherwise thrive to the level which the global market allows. And we're establishing a foundation for newly growing industries by making better use of existing and expanding infrastructure becomes a reality. Next slide. As we were going through uh, the process of all our community meetings and the analysis that we were doing, uh, we always had several questions that, that Paul and I would pose to each other, and, and we also pose them to the groups that, to the working group that we were, uh, that we engage with and, and with the participants of our meetings. How do we make South Aid a stronger community where more people can work and not only live and play? What industries should be targeted, which create the greatest opportunity for growth, both in terms of number of jobs and wages? How do we try to ensure that good jobs means good jobs for people at every income level? What needs to be done to attract targeted industries? And what is or are the organizations responsible for attracting and supporting the needs of companies within the targeted industries? How do we dig, dig deeper to the supply chain? And how do we help those companies thrive as, as we move forward? Next slide. Thanks, Paul. So, so um, um, our uh, development, our South Aid Economic Development strategic goals, uh, strategy goals for what we were putting together was to focus on number of jobs created or the loss mitigated by industry. Uh, our goal was to increase the growth in number of jobs in emerging industries by 1.5 times the recent historic ratio of South Aid. Uh, and as compared to countywide jobs in that industry. For traditional industries, maintain employment at current levels through 2025. Uh, currently, we have 175,000 workers that live in South Dade who travel outside of the region every day for work. 
Now, frankly, that may be changed with COVID as more and more people are going to, or have already started working from home. Um, and, and we need to revisit that number. However, that has been a constant struggle for the economic development effort in South Dade. And, and again, people can, can live and play, but not necessarily work in South Dade. So strategies should be designed in a way to enhance the percentage of the workforce that lives in the region and also works in the region. We need to promote general wage growth among South Dade workers, and we need to support small business creation and, and enhance their viability so that they can survive that two years of survival milestone, which defines whether or not a small business is going to make it or not. So those are the goals that we, uh, that we have incorporated. Uh, those, these, the commentary that you've heard in this section were the, the, the guidance that we used as we put the, the, the plan together, as we did the analysis, and, and it will be contained in our, in our final report. Paul, I turn it back to you. Thanks, Diana. I, I just want to point one thing out with this. Um, why, why, is this why is this an issue and why these are goals? If you look at South Dade as a subregion of the county overall, uh, when you compare this, this notion of 175,000 people leaving the region, you can say, well, does that happen all over the county? The, the answer is nowhere near to the same extent. Um, if you look at South Dade as a, as a sub area, it's about 40% less employment per, per resident in South Dade. Peter England, the executive director of the, of the EDC, loves this, loves this figure because I think it, it, and he's right, it captures a lot of, a lot of what's, what's going on. Uh, but 40% but less uh, of, of residents that live in South Dade actually work in South Dade when you compare it to the rest of the county. So uh, the, the notion of that this is, this is an issue, it's also as it relates to wages, it's also an area uh, where South Dade has the lowest, uh, the lowest wage, uh, uh, wage profile of the county overall. And so uh, that's, that's why these are, these are two key, key areas. Um, so what's the rationale? We, you know, we've, we're, we are absolutely recommending, um, and not to, not to get confused in this, that there should be a South Dade specific local economic development, development organization. Um, that local economic development organization needs to be built on the tremendous work that the existing EDC has done already or grow out of the EDC. Uh, Economic Development Council, but 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 there there has to be a focused effort continuing for for South Dade as well. Um, so uh, uh, as as you saw, the ratio of jobs per resident within South Dade is under fifty five percent. I use the opposite 40 percent uh, that are actually you know with, within uh, with, within the region. So um, kind of the, the opposite of what I what I just talked about. And there's also a natural tendency of large businesses that come from outside of Miami. Uh, which is which is viewed as being highly urbanized. I mean, it's not as as we all know. Those of us that have spent a lot of time working in South Dade around economic development, S South Dade is is not is not typical for for Miami Dade Dade County. The way people on the outside view it, it's uh, people discover it, they love it, uh, but it's uh, but it's it's atypical, particularly from a from a business and an international business perspective as well. Um, and so we need to need to be able to promote what we have in South Dade uh, that's distinct from Miami overall. It gets kind of lost uh, to, to a large extent. Um, uh, South Dade also business community requires organizations to advocate for its needs, uh, which are somewhat unique, right? So there's this continued inf infrastructure investment need, not necessarily the case in the remainder of the county. There's some low income areas in the center part of the county. I mean, you've heard Commissioner Monestine over the years and others in, in his district uh, uh, talk about the need for enhancing infrastructure, but not anywhere on the scale and, and the number, the, the degree that we still have that, that issue in, in South Dade. And there's also this continued improvement to the transportation network, which is coming. Um, and, and finally, that needs, to, needs an advocacy. And finally, there are two very unique industries in South Dade that are major industries, agriculture and military, um, that with the exception of, of, uh, of um, uh, Southern Command in, in, in Doral, uh, which, is, which is actually a much, a much smaller installation uh, than Homestead Harb or uh, even the Coast Guard, 
Coast Guard facilities, uh, that, that there needs to be this, this real focus on those industries because they're central to, to our economy where it's not necessarily the case, case countywide. And so that's, that's the, the real r reason why we need, we need those, the, those South Dade very specific organization that focuses on those issues in our, in our recommendations and view. Uh, success of the EDC is really the foundation that all of this is going to get, get bid on, built on, um, although it's been largely voluntary over, over the years. Uh, the EDC has become the go-to group for economic development in South Dade. Um, they're a strong advocate for business uh, within, within South Dade and awareness of South Dade and the opportunities as, as well. Uh, they increasingly have been coordinating with other economic development oriented groups. Uh, most recently, the South Florida Defense Alliance, which is out there and doing doing work countywide with Beacon Council, among others, on building uh, on building the opportunities around around defense, including attracting the F potentially the F thirty five squadron uh, to uh, to home uh, to Harb or a F thirty five squadron to, to the Air Reserve bases as well. Um, and so, uh, and there's been this increasing participation among larger entities in the EDC than has been the case in the past. So it's a, it's a really great foundation to, to build on, but um, we, there, there is still a long way to go. The EDC is not at a stage, I think we all agree in looking at it and, and even the EDC it, see itself, um, that uh, it is not at a stage where it really can implement this, this plan. It doesn't have the depth of resources. Um, as I said, it's 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 almost entirely voluntary. Uh, it has a dedicated, forward-looking board team, but it has no sustained funding source at, at this point. Uh, the chamber of commerce is likewise don't have the capacity or mandate to be able to to accommodate it either. Um, and so, we we strongly are recommending that there needs to be a low. Leto, local economic development organization, or reinvigorated EDC, which is a very targeted role, objectives and goals, has rationalized funding for what it's being asked to do, um, large and small business involvement, and it has to have this buy-in of both government and the private sector. So we've laid out uh, implementation matrix of who does what, right? So, so you have all these organizations. You have the, this economic development organization that we're that we're recommending county and municipal government itself, Beacon Council, Enterprise Florida and the state, and then the EDA, national government and, and regional, regional partners as, as well. So um, for things like large business attraction and retention, that, that, that goes across a lot, of, a lot of groups. For incentives, it's principally either structured through government or, or, uh, or the Beacon Council or coming in, in government. But when it comes to small business development support, the South Dade targeted marketing materials and, and distribution of those materials, the South Dade data and information, all of that will is, is best suited and to reside within this South Dade Economic Development Organization. Um, our timeline for this, we've laid out a timeline and this may this may get extended given the current current uh, conditions, but but initially our, our our development economic development strategy timeline is that there's this structure in place by the year end of 2020 of what this organization that we're standing up this organization by the end of end of this year, um, or rather building on building on the EDC's efforts by the end of this year, and the team and initial funder are in place by the summer of 20, 2021 um, that we have the full full collateral material and fully functioning web based presence in late 2021. And then, and then we're 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 spinning on all all cylinders uh, by the by the middle of 2022. By this time, two years hence, uh, with the funding in place, with the materials in place, uh, then we have a fully functioning organization. We've developed a budget. And I'll just tell you what we think that budget is. It's about 600 to 650 thousand uh, dollars per year. Although, and, and we we have a breakdown of that in, in the report as well. So j just one more time to, to remind you, comments, request, questions, you can always email them to southdademeetings at miamidade.gov. Um, and I think we show this, this one, more, one more time as well. Um, finally, uh, we, uh, we've developed a series or recommended a series of strategies, actions uh, by these two industries that I, I started this conversation with, two, two groups of industries, emerging industries, and traditional industries. And again, those emerging industries that we've, we've focused on are ones that are quickly growing, um, in, are, are in South Dade and are quickly growing, and, and importantly, are projected to grow significantly going forward into, into the future. Uh, so those include healthcare, 
it's a traditional industry for South Dade. Obviously, Baptist, its big presence uh, in, in South Dade among among other uh, medical medical arts and medical facilities. But but nevertheless, uh, it, it is also growing very very quickly. Uh, professional services, as I discussed before, engineers, uh, architects, and the like. Uh, tourism, um, uh, growth growth industry, insurance. Um, obviously, American American bankers, uh, Assurant, as well as as well as Avmed, uh, but it, but it's also a growth among among others. Uh, also, logistics. Um, you, heard, you heard from Commissioner Moss. It's not the first first one. Obviously, FedEx is already already located there. And, and the aviation industry, particularly MRO, which is the maintenance and operations portion of of aviation, uh, within around Miami Executive Airport, but eventually, hopefully. At, at the air reserve base as well in terms of in terms of joint use and then there's the traditional target industries agriculture defense and retail that have been cornerstones of the economy for a long long time um, but we we need to make sure that they continue to be stable and, and grow into the future despite all of the, the the national global issues that impact impact each of those and in the case of retail obviously uh, this transition uh, that's that's rapidly going on to e-commerce um, uh, from from bricks and mortar retail. That's having a profound impact on the industry globally, and certainly, certainly, I should say, certainly through the through the um, uh, through the industrialized economies throughout the United States. So, um, we we have a, a series of of recommendations we've identified for each of these. I'm not going to go through these with you because we wanted to, to make sure that we uh, we have time for to, to back and forth on questions. But agriculture, significantly existing existing assets, um, as as well as implementation implementation strategies to strengthen the agriculture uh, environment and the agriculture industry within within South South Bay. Um, so for example, you know, advocating for the UF tropical research, a very important point about how to transition to crops, stronger crops, um, both as, as it relates to environmental changes as well as policy and tariff changes within South South Aid. We have a we have one of the great centers in the United States that's working on this within South Aid. We need to be able to, to strengthen and make sure that, that 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 exists and continues because it's so central to our to our to our economy. Um, and we want to be able to work with the, the Farm Bureau to expand the knowledge of innovation, encourage rules uh, and changes to support the agriculture industry. Uh, the Congresswoman talked a bit about about the next the next round of um, of stimulus funding and infrastructure funding, there is also uh, the next the next farm bill is is coming due. And one of the most important things of of this local economic development organization is to ensure that non agriculture groups are advocating are advocating alongside with our with our partners within agriculture, given how important it is to our to our economy in, in South Bay. And that can only be done if there's a coordinating entity that's that's tying all of that together. Agriculture cannot advocate for agriculture alone. And we have very unique crops in, in South Florida uh, that, that need its own agri. This is not, this is not dairy. Uh, this is not row crops. Uh, it's, a, it's a very different type of, type of typology of crops uh, that need their own, own advocacy. And it's very important that we're able to do that within, within the confines of, of South Dade. Um, uh, in terms of in terms of healthcare, uh, uh, there's there's significant assets, obviously that we that we all are, are well aware of. Um, but there's also a number of expansion efforts uh, that are that are planned uh, for the hospitals, and we want to make sure that we're advocating strongly supporting that. Um, and and as well as as well as from all of our interviews and stakeholder interviews, ensuring that the that the hospitals have the staffing that they need. One of the one of the biggest challenges. In South Dade, as it, as it relates to hospital staffing, is not so much uh, at the at the technical staff level, um, and even to some extent at the at the uh, LRN. It, it is it is at the higher wage wage um, uh, employment among among physicians as well as as well as very specialized nursing. Um, it's very difficult uh, to get get those folks to South Dade because they're not necessarily living in South Dade. And so uh, to be able to strengthen that, that becomes becomes a core component that obviously the EDC or or the the Leto can take take on take on as well. And Diana, I'm just running through this uh, uh, to, to, to a large extent to kind of just keep uh, keep moving so we can uh, we can wrap up. The defense, um, one of the Beacon Council already has has a lot of focus on defense and, and especially in the throughout the state of Florida and, and different areas where there's opportunities. 
um, aircraft MRO is not only for the private sector, but also the military contracts out uh, maintenance of, of some of their jets, jets as well. Um, and there's this opportunity, as I said before, one of the biggest opportunities uh, of being able to attract the F-35 squadron uh, to Homestead Air Force Base. And F-35 squadron may be just a, what appear to be a small number of planes. But from everything that we, we understand now from our research is the plane is so advanced um, that it requires a, a very, very large support uh, support contingent that comes comes with it, both private and public, uh, Lockheed Martin and others, and all of that combined to, to cause a substantial number of staff and investment within 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 South Dade. Um, obviously, retail has been has been impacted heavily um, for the last several years as a result of the transition to e-commerce, and it's only been exacerbated in the past two months uh, to to a large extent. Um, but there are a number of strategies in terms of really focusing on on retail in South Dade, primarily to to help also transition um, uh, tra transition retail uh, away from from the to, to help those sites that are that are very retail uh, very, very retail focused, i.e., some of the larger malls, to be able to help them transition away from. Uh, from that business and diversify diversify the business as it relates to new infrastructure investment, helping them uh, helping them deal with those or take advantage of I should say those large parking lots uh, that are no longer full to a, to a large extent. Um, and you have the same thing in terms of the strong, smaller strip centers as well, which are which are going to end up doing better because the nature of retail is there is a still always a very strong localized retail. Uh, but this transition to food, uh, which it really is, is, a, is, is a piece of this, is people, to the extent that people start to return to restaurants and restaurants are, are, are reframed in a way that they're, that they're safer places or people view them as, uh, as being healthy, healthy places over the long term, uh, we'll, we'll be able to, to start to see that transition, transition as well. Professional services, as I said before, what we've seen is, uh, is a large number of, of um, of accounting, legal, and uh, engineering, and, and even in the construction industry, um, although it's not related to this, construction firms that have started to locate in South Aid at much larger numbers and at much higher employment, employment rates uh, than, than in the past. I mean, this is an area where I don't think the education is necessarily tied as well within the South Aid context because nobody has really focused on it yet. Um, to where uh, to, to where the job opportunities are, and so we need to ensure that we're continually to make those make those links uh, between these professional services. It's another area where quality of life is huge because the people that are making the decisions in these professional service categories are largely the owners of those of those businesses. That's true of many businesses, uh, but they where where to locate. But they are particularly true of, of professional service businesses, especially smaller ones where they don't need a very large number of, of other staff people um, associated with them. And, and a targeted campaign to attract professional service businesses into South Aid, we clearly see it happening on its own and it'll only add and be able to, to build upon itself, build upon itself as, 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 as well. Um, tourism obviously is a, is a, is a critical, critical category. Uh, and this is largely about continuing. There's, there's been great efforts already underway. So I don't want to say that we're, we're adding that much as it relates to tourism in terms of implementation, because it's really building upon what, uh, what's been done already. The Greater Miami Chamber, of, or rather Visitors Bureau, GNCBB, has done a terrific job at really focusing in on a very, very focused campaign in South Bay that's already shown quite a, quite a bit of dividends as, as, as well. Uh, but we also need, there are areas of strengthening in terms of over the years has been, this, as, as, at least as it relates to economic development, to advocate for zoning and other land use changes, which are low, allow lower density hospitality and low impact touristic activity outside the UDB. Um, you know, there's a very fine line there, um, and uh, and understand that you know it's it's outside the UDB becomes very uh, very challenging for many reasons because are you actually opening Pandora's box by by allowing any type of any type of business activity beyond beyond um, uh, beyond farming and, and, uh, and agriculture outside the UDB. But nevertheless, uh, you know, we think that there's some low impact areas, um, not unlike some, some areas within California and elsewhere around the country that we have examples of, and we'll include in the final report, 
uh, that can uh, that can serve South Dade very well at being able to attract tourists and strengthen the uh, strengthen the uh, the agriculture sector at the at the same time. Um, in, insurance is another category, major growth category in South Dade that nobody really talks about. We know we have the insurers here, but but uh, uh, but it's a significant category. It's something that uh, that the growth is is all projected to continue to grow statewide and countywide. Um, and we really need to make sure that we have our fair share or better than our fair share in South Dade. And so we recommend a number of, number of strategies at the state, uh, advocacy to, to some extent, but also developing unique, unique targeted materials to focus in on the insurance industry. Um, and finally, uh, uh, logistics, uh, which is, uh, which is, as I said at the very beginning, and uh, you heard Commissioner Moss talk about, uh, logistics has, has largely, you know, if you, if you talk about logistics in South Dade, um, uh, 10, 10 years ago, people would say it's the end of the earth. That's no longer the case. Uh, South Dade land cost, uh, it's, it's uh, accessibility uh, from the turnpike, uh, cost of value of being able to move goods and services from South Dade, um, and the relative lack of, of other, uh, other cost-effective locations have turned South Dade into a real, a real opportunity for logistics, um, where that wasn't the case over the long term. And this is a, a, another category that's growing, growing very, very quickly as, as, as well. And I'm sorry, there is, there is one more, which is, which is aviation. Um, and aviation is, as I said before, is principally uh, um, the, the maintenance and repair operations uh, of, of the aviation business, which is a core, a core and very valuable business in of itself. And the big opportunity here is not only at Miami Executive Airport, but there may be an opportunity for continuing discussion about joint use at the Homestead Air Reserve Base, uh, primarily for maintenance. There's, there's unlikely, if never, going to be an opportunity uh, from what we know at this point for joint use as it relates to commercial and or, uh, and or passenger, uh, passenger flights into, into HARP. Uh, but but there may be an opportunity in terms of in terms of MRO and maintenance, and it both serves the military's purpose. Those those same facilities can serve the military's purpose as well as the civilian air purpose as, as well. So um, that's an area of, of further focus and exploration, and we make very specific recommendations as as, as that. Um, there is this bigger issue. So th those are our recommendations as, as it relates to, to strategies that are very indus industry specific, but there is this bigger issue uh, that impacts all of our community uh, in South Aid, which is related to climate change and sea level rise and resiliency, resiliency to that. And so we've made uh, some very specific recommendations uh, associated with climate change and sea level rise, um, how the local economic development organization can help, help support businesses that are going to be impacted specifically, um, and this again is two of our traditional industries, military specific efforts, uh, the South Florida Defense Alliance in conjunction with the Beacon Council is now very focused on this effort of, of strengthening the base, uh, base resiliency, but even beyond that, of being able to stand up a national center of excellence for climate change in, in, in Miami-Dade Miami -Dade County. Um, there is a there is a woman that used to be uh, the that's kind of the the the, um, the kind of the, the the thought leader in this idea. A woman by the name of Pam Burkowski, who used to be in the Defense Department uh, at a very senior level uh, in the Chief of Staff's office, now now actually uh, lives lives and works in South Dade um, and has been very much behind this effort of actually using, uh, rather lives and works in Miami-Dade County, but using uh, this opportunity to actually stand up the center of excellence around climate change uh, in Miami and how it impacts defense at many, many different levels, both from a base perspective and then and then obviously as it relates to uh, to be able to go out and, and uh, what were the impacts as it relates to military operations as well. And then agriculture also, um, there's, there's need for innovation because of different crops uh, in terms of different weather patterns and natural resource conservation um, in terms of the Biscayne Aquifer, um, which also includes saltwater intrusion, which has a, has a real, real impact impact as well. And how does, how does agriculture coexist with other climate and environmental stewardship efforts also? Um, so we are, we're here and just wrapping, wrapping up. Uh, and again, at any point, please email at any time to South Dade meetings 
at miamidade.gov. I've not checked it recently, but I hope we have we have a number a number of questions from you this morning. Um, and just to, to finalize this, um, in terms of our next steps, uh, we're we're in the process after today's meeting and with your your input and your questions and comments uh, to produce a final narrative report, uh, considering the input from today. Uh, we're gonna, gonna work on helping to support the beginning of the implementation of the COVID-19 recommendations as, as well, given the, given the, uh, the immediacy and need, need for that uh, in very short order. Um, it, we, we feel it is critically important right now, especially given the fact that there are new funding sources available to identify and obtain those commitments for those sources uh, for the implementation of the strategy. Um, this, this is, as Commissioner Kava said, this, is, uh, this potentially is an opportunity as opposed to, um, you know, out of, out of every crisis comes opportunities. And this is certainly, certainly one chance and one opportunity to be able to do that. And, and you as, as a community in South Dade um, have an have a ability to, to support, this, support this effort in, in the short and medium term as well. Um, and then finally, uh, to help structure the governance and team for this low income, uh, sorry, the, uh, uh, the local economic development organization uh, that really needs to, needs to be a coordinated effort with the, with the county and the five municipalities um, as, as well. So thanks, uh, thank you to all the partners that have participated in this and obviously to your participation as, as community members and business, uh, business um, community members within, within South Aid. Uh, the input for, to us has been tremendous. Uh, we've had great support in terms of this effort um, and, uh, and the recommendations would not be as, as focused as they were, uh, but for, uh, but for that, that participation and input uh, from everyone as well. So uh, thank, thank you again. And we're, you know, we're, we're here and prepared to, to, to answer some of the questions. So um, with that, Diana, you wanna, any, anything in terms of yeah, a, a couple of things. Um, I, I hope everyone will, upon going through this, you know, at your leisure and, and being able to read it, I hope you will see that the strategy that we've put forward is not just an economic development strategy to create jobs for the sake of jobs, but to develop a strategy that truly relates to South Dade. South Dade is special. Uh, as a community because of the agriculture, because of, de of the defense community, be because of, of the, the, the retail corridor that we have going down US-1, which is significant. So it, in addition, we also uh, answered one of our guiding questions that, that, that we had in, in our plan of making sure that we create, that, that we um, encourage industries that are going to bring us the greatest number of jobs. And that's what you see in the emerging industries. And then tourism is, has been a traditional industry and, and, and now it's becoming more of an emerging industry because of the support that we're seeing for ecotourism, nature-based tourism. If anyone has, has uh, caught the last campaign from, that came from uh, the Greater Miami Convention and Visitors Bureau, it's all about the, natu the national parks. And, and so uh, again, at, as, uh, as Paul's saying in, in wrapping up, we want you to think about not only what we're proposing, but the fact that there's been sensitivity and concern to make sure that this is the right thing for South Dade. This is not a one size fits all plan that you right. can just cookie cut and, and put anywhere. Uh, I believe Lisa wanted to make one more comment. Yes, thank you, Diana. Listen, we have been fortunate to have Greg Vade from the US EDA pop back on the call with us. Greg, if you can unmute, we'd love to hear a few words from you as well. And thank you for coming back. Can you folks hear me? Yep. Uh, can you guys hear me? There you are, yes. Can you hear me, Lisa? Okay, yes, thank well, you. thank you. Sorry for the technical uh, difficulties earlier this morning. I, uh, I got bumped off uh, inadvertently, but, but I wanted to say thank you. Uh, thank you to, um, uh, to, uh, to the team, to, to the EDC team. 
to South Florida Regional Planning Council, Miami-Dade County, Mayor Losner, Commissioner Kava and Moss, Representative uh, McCarcel uh, uh, Powell, uh, and all of the folks that have um, that have that have that have stayed the course and and really provided the uh, uh, the impetus to drive this uh, this plan to where we are today. So I wanted to say thank you from from EDA's perspective. Uh, we're, we're ha we appreciate the partnership with you all in this effort to help move South Miami Dade forward from a recovery and resiliency standpoint, and and we'll continue to be your partners looking at the future. Um, I just want to echo some of the things that people have said. Um, th these are definitely unique and challenging times, no, no doubt about that. I looked at the Florida scorecard today at the Florida Chamber. Uh, you know, Florida's got a, our current unemployment rate is 12.9% and increasing. Definitely not a good thing. 1.2 million people unemployed. Uh, sales tax collections way down. However, so that's the bad news. The good news is as, as Paul said, and some other folks have said, you have to see this as an opportunity. I mean, that's the real, real challenge here. So, so to augment those, that, 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 that question and that reframing, um, I'm just offering some suggestions here. Refocus, we talked about, focus on growing industry sectors, how you can help to augment uh, job creation and private sector investment in some of those new sectors. Paul talked about those. Um, professional technical services, logistics, transportation, and others. Uh, don't forget the sectors that need support. Obviously, uh, there are there are numerous resources under the CARES Act to provide support to local governments, especially in times of this economic crisis. EDA's focus is always going to be on helping you all recover from the effects of COVID-19 and become more resilient. So keep keep that in mind for any future discussions. Also, goes without saying, collaborate. That's going to be very important. I know we've talked about this today um, quite a bit, but, but think about new ways that public and private sector can come together um, to really drive investment and, and, and industry job creation around these growing and unique resources that we have in South Miami-Dade County. Embrace regional solutions where we can do that, because from EDA's perspective, we appreciate regional solutions. And then my last comment is, this is the pivot, right? So the question is going to be, what is the new normal? How can we utilize the, the talents, the resources, the unique set of conditions that you all have in South Miami-Dade to provide and energize uh, a more resilient economy? Uh, and I would also uh, add that you've got nine opportunity zones uh, I think it's nine, Lisa, maybe, maybe more. I just did a count this morning. Don't forget about those opportunity zones. EDA is focused on those opportunity zones and where we can provide resources to help augment economic development within opportunity zones. Uh, we're, we're happy to do that. And then I think um, uh, Mayor Lausner made a great point this morning that I wanted to echo. Think big. This is the opportunity. It, it may not come around again. So definitely think big. Um, and 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 um, think creatively, think innovatively, and uh, I'm looking forward to having further conversations with you all in the future. And uh, thank you for inviting me to to say a few words today. So appreciate that. Thank you. Our pleasure. Thank you, Lisa. Um, I, I just want to want to add. Right there, there's been a number of questions that have come through about. Um, about uh, people requesting the PowerPoint and the video, right, for uh, for today. So just um, we should have should have started with that. So apologize about that. But there's um, this will be at least I just want to make sure I'm right. This is avail This is going to be made available both the PowerPoint for download and the and the video of, of today's Zoom on the on the EDC's website, um, which is South Dade EDC .com. So S O U T H right Dade D A D E edc.com um, is where where you'll be able to find this. I would imagine it'll probably get uploaded in the next 24 hours. Um, Lisa, is that right? Yeah. That is correct. Thank you, Paul, for that reminder. And yeah. in addition to the the this email that you have posted here for questions and comments, the southdateedc.com website also has a community feedback form, which we invite um, feedback on this presentation and suggestions. So thank you for that. Yeah, so I mean, I think that that's, uh, I'm, I'm just looking down and um, uh, so we'll, 
Yeah, but for, for anyone that's anyone that's looking for it, it'll be it'll be made made available there. And of course, you can kind of continue to send questions after today to the South Day meetings or after this morning and into tomorrow to South Day meetings at Miami.gov, and we'll 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 answer them um, we'll answer them one by one um, as as well. So um, so you just you know feel feel free to send it to us at at, at any any time. Um, let me. Uh, uh, let me let me answer one question that I that I saw and Jerry and uh, Diane. I don't know if you've seen others, but yeah. one, one, there, there was one particular question about Southland Mall. Um, you know, now now with Southland, um, obviously uh, the uh, with some of the closures in Southland that have been going on and 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 the impacts of of, uh, of this latest crisis I probably have not entirely even played out yet. Uh, we or from from. Uh, from broad knowledge of what uh, what the impact is on Southland, um, but uh, but it's not it's not going to be good. Um, that's that's for sure. Uh, and so, at least from a retail perspective, but the the opportunity of that of that property for other other things um, is tremendous. I mean, so uh, for, first of all, it's going to be one of the one of the significant stops on the uh, on the on the bus rapid transit. Um, so to be able to integrate other uses on that property or even reframing the indoor outdoor elements of Southland Mall as it relates to, to the retail and restaurants and you know that area is clearly from our view under uh, under under restauranted food uh, food opportunities and there may be maybe hotel opportunities as, as, as well um, um, so and residential uh, so there, there's a there's a big opportunity there, and as as uh, you know, as Commissioner Moss has focused in on for for a large number of, of years, and even more so recently, um, the opportunity of of integrating Southland across the street into the South Day Government Center, uh, which presents which presents a whole other host of opportunities as well. Um, so it's not only Southland; it's two major properties that are kind of ripe or available for redevelopment, being able to link link together. Um, from our view, uh, um, we it's it's an area that we should all be focused on trying to figure out figure out this bigger plan for that for that node uh, that that intersection, uh, because it, it does present itself as probably the most significant. Of, of immediate opportunities in, in, in South Bend. Um, there are some there are some inherent challenges to the Southland Mall property. I mean, you those of you who've kind of seen it on the have ever looked on the property appraiser's website uh, will see that Southland Mall unfortunately is not owned by all one entity. Um, it's actually it's actually broken up. It's uh, it's uh, balkanized quite a bit because that's the way those malls were owned. So Macy's owns its pads, Sears. Uh, Sears owned its pad um, and so on and so forth. And so uh, you have to have multiple owners. It may look like one big property, but in reality, it's a, it's a, it's a mishmash of, of uh, cross easements and rights of everyone be able to use parking among others. And you know, not all the areas are owned by one entity. So there's, there's kind of inherent issues internal to the, uh, to the, to the property's re redevelopment. Uh, but it's certainly something uh, that that we as a, uh, as a as a community and, and certainly government uh, can be very uh, very supportive of and and, um, and and creates a whole new opportunity for that for that intersection. So you know, thank thank you for that question because I think um, I, I think it's a it's an immediate uh, it, it becomes an immediate opportunity at least at least in terms of planning because as we come out of the current crisis, um, we can actually start delivering delivering on 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 the new vision for that property. And Paul, if I could uh, add as well, that piece of property has some very favorable uh, planning and zoning regulations that, that the um, town of Cutler Bay has, has passed in terms of um, uh, minimal amounts of public hearings required and, and it, yeah. they, they've set the scenario so that whatever redevelopment happens on that property can happen expeditiously. So they're they're a very they're, they're making an effort to be uh, a very progressive partner from a an entitlement and land use uh, regulation perspective. Yeah. So it's a good question. Have you, have you seen any other questions? Uh, Paul, could I? Paul, I like to chime in on that. Yeah, that of course. Uh, and and simply say uh, we've been 
working particularly across the street at the South Bay Government Center for many, many years now, as part of the Moss Plan, mm -hmm. and looking for a way to develop a cultural arts village at that location. And we're still moving uh, in that direction. Uh, again, we always envisioned that the mall across the street would be tied into that property. And there's also a third property uh, that needs to be looked at in that general corridor. Uh, right along the busway where you have Target. Uh, now the county, we've acquired uh, some property that we have now parking ride on. And I'm certainly encouraging us to take a look at some sort of transit oriented development at that location. So you've got that property, you've got Southland Mall, and you've got the property over at the South Day Government Center. And we've had some inquiries as it relates to doing the redevelopment at the South Day Government Center. We haven't quite had what I consider to be the wow, uh, you know, that uh, we need to basically move that project forward. But we're still talking with uh, interested parties at this particular po point in time to see what it is that, uh, uh, you know, they have to offer and bring it to the table. And certainly I think some of them are also talking to the folks over at the, uh, the mall, the various property owners there. So there's a tremendous opportunity at that location. Again, you've got Turnpike, you've got US-1, uh, you've got uh, the busway. Uh, so, uh, you know, the, the, I guess development happens in its own time. And I think eventually, I know eventually, you know, that there it will be significant development in that particular area. Uh, and again, looking for some housing, workforce housing, hotel, uh, restaurant, uh, you know, those kinds of facilities that would uh, basically uh, complement uh, the uh, the cultural arts center at that location, and that was the point of putting it there that it would become a catalyst, you know, for development around that facility and in the in the, in the local area. So, again, we're we're open uh, and and listening to potential developers who have a plan, who have a wow uh, to bring to the table, um, and and then maybe there's something that we can do working together and a public-private partnership to, to get things accomplished. Um, anything else? Uh, has anybody, just Diana, uh, Lisa, yeah. any other, have we seen any other comments or questions? I, I Paul, if, Paul, if I could add one more thought about uh, Cutler Bay, they've got an expedited uh, approval process for new projects that uh, if, the, uh, the the project that's being proposed meets all of the existing zoning requirements. It gets fast tracked, does not even require a public hearing, and uh, that's a that's a big incentive to a developer. Yeah, that's not going to be the hang up on on Southland at all. You're right. I mean, it's uh, it's it's not the regulatory issues, right? In, in fact, in fact, the uh, the private sector in this case is behind the public sector it, 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 in terms of timing and being able to to take advantage and see the opportunity. Yeah. Um, and uh, I just say one, one more thing. I mean, Mayor, th thanks for thanks for hosting this. Sorry, uh, we couldn't have done it in person um, in, in your uh, in, in Homestead, but um, it's another area where there's tremendous opportunities going going forward that that keep growing and growing and growing um, even further south. And same for, same with Florida City. It's another it's another area that just uh, just all of a sudden the, the economic opportunities have expanded exponentially over the past the past couple of years from our view. So. Yeah, we're, we're we're excited to to try to at least put our uh, our our support and input into into how to how to um, harness harness some of that 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 opportunity. Um, and so you'll over the next uh, uh, the next several weeks, so we'll have a we'll have a formal uh, final final draft um, uh, based upon all all the work and comments and everything else, and we'll. We'll submit that, and obviously that will be broadly distributed, also, and uh, hopefully uh, we'll get incorporated. And we we're, we're here and welcoming any any comments or input um, from anyone as it relates to that final draft, which may be easier to uh, to absorb uh, in a sober way as opposed to just listening to our presentation the, the, this morning. So, um, so from our perspective, you know, thank you, thank you for your your participation today and your uh, your attention and your your focus and. We'll, uh, we're, we're, we're here at any, any time to answer or uh, any other questions and very much welcome your, your input and comments as well. Uh, 
Um, so thank you, Lisa. You know. Paul, Paul, let me let me let me add something. Uh, I also uh, want to say that we recently gotten a, you know an agreement, at least a tentative approval, uh, with the Air Force to develop a joint use development county facility uh, at Homestead Air Reserve Base, and we're working through those issues in terms of location. Um, but after all these years, we finally gotten. Uh, the Air Force to say that you know they would approve a joint use at that location, and we're working through uh, the process of, of working with some of the other um, uh, organ agencies out there who are desiring property that we own, and we're desiring property that the Air Force owns, and so we're we're kind of working through those issues right now. But we do have a tentative approval uh, with them. Lisa, that's you want fantastic. To yes, that's fantastic. Thank, thank you for those comments, Commissioner Moss. And I, I just in closing, I would say I would encourage all on the call and all who have been invited to this to bring your suggestions and your feedback and your questions because we need them, as Paul had indicated, in order for us to, you know, put an actual and final strategy together. Um, can't happen without the collaboration of all those on the call can't thank those enough who have taken the time to be on this call, including our dignitaries and elected officials. Thank you very much. And uh, we appreciate it. Thank you. I guess with that, we'll, uh, we'll close out the third, the third and final uh, community meeting and look forward to your, your comments through other, other means, email, texts, uh, phone calls in person, well, in person, you know, to, to some, how, however that, that would work. But uh, but look look forward to uh, uh, to uh, to hearing hearing from you going forward. So thank you very much.